Hi, welcome to episode five of the Hyrus Makes Knitting Podcast. I'm Iris, the designer behind Hyrus Makes. So today I just want to chat a little bit about some of my upcoming designs, um, a little bit of what I've been up to over the past almost a year since I last did one of these episodes, um, and just a little check-in. So, yeah. Speaking of upcoming designs, depending when you're watching this, either my latest design is just out or it's been out for few days um, and this design is called the buttercup cardigan um, and I designed this back last year um, it took me a long time to knit because I was just you know procrastinating with it but um, it is a cute little top-down cardigan um, it's not going to look very nice in there holding it up like this but it's a lightweight top-down cardigan um, with this really cute little um, edging detail. So it has these really cute little buttercup kind of flower designs on the cuff of the sleeve um, and also on the cuff of the of the body. So it'll pick it up nicely in this light. Yeah, so it has this really cute little buttercup design. Um, and it's just a really super simple shape. It's got um, short rows to kind of shape the back so the neck is um, sits nicely. And then it is just knitted flat. Um, the yoke is knitted flat, back and forth in rows. Um, and then the sleeves are knitted in the round and there is tapering on the sleeves. So it should be quite a nice sort of snug fit. Um, I made mine fairly cropped in length, but you can of course make it as long as you like. Um, something else that maybe is nice about this design is that it has an integrated button band with the button holes. So you knit these um, as you go top down. Um, so there's no picking up stitches, it's just cast on, knit, 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 until you get to the cuffs and to the hem, where you have to make this little flower detail. Um, so people always kind of ask me about difficulty of patterns, and it can be kind of hard to, to judge that, because one person's difficult is another person's really easy, one person's easy is another person's difficult. Um, some people prefer cable knitting, some people prefer knitting in the round, flat, etc. Um, but what I've started doing on my um, latest designs and what I want to do going forward is to write a little bit about the techniques that are involved um, with each pattern and a little bit about kind of which techniques you might need to already know in order to approach this pattern and which ones you could learn as you go along. So for this particular pattern, um, it's knitted flat and in the round, so uh, that, that's pretty straightforward. It's all stock in it, so you know, you're know you knitting on one side, purling on the other side, and then on the sleeves you're just knitting. So that's all really straightforward. Yep, so this pattern has a few different techniques that um, it might be beneficial if you've done before. So the first one is having constructed any sort of top-down garment before, that would be very useful. Um, so I wouldn't knit this as your very first garment simply because it's on quite a small gauge. So it's on three millimeter needles, it's knitted back and forth. So if you make mistakes, they're going to be quite costly in terms of time to go back. Um, so if you're looking for a complete beginner sweater or cardigan, go for something with a heavier weight um, yarn, just because it'll just be easier to go back and fix your mistakes and also to see what's going on. Okay, so if you've knitted any sort of garment before, and you're pretty confident, I think you'll be okay doing this one, especially if you're happy to go and look up some videos and find out a little bit about the techniques. So at the top, we've got um, German short rows to shape the back of the neck to bring it higher up. Um, and this is all in stockinette, so it should be fairly easy to do these short rows in comparison to maybe on a raglan or in on a pattern with some kind of um, stitch pattern to it. That being said, it's not a beginner's pattern, so the German short row instructions are written in a kind of basic way and it relies on you having either done them already or be willing to watch some videos and to learn. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't let that put you off and if you're really struggling, you can always omit the short rows and just 
um, knit the cardigan without them. So the second technique that's maybe the most complicated thing about this pattern are these little flower details on the hem. So it would be good to have some experience maybe in having knitted a more complicated stitch pattern before. Um, but that being said, it's not nearly as complicated as it looks. It's just quite time consuming and you need to pay some attention. So whereas you can knit the whole rest of the cardigan basically watching TV on the train or something like that, the little flowers, you probably want to sit down and concentrate a little bit on those when you're doing that part of the pattern. Um, and it's worked over about three rows, with two rows being kind of complicated and the third row uh, very simple. Um, I don't expect you necessarily to have already knitted this pattern before, this stitch pattern before, um, so that there are links to YouTube videos and to blog posts, and there's also written descriptions on how to do this flower stitch. Um, so I suggest you just practice it in the swatch, um, and I'm sure you'll be fine with that one. Like I said, just keep some time aside to sit down and properly do that step. Um, and don't expect to be able to do it on a um, train or whilst watching a movie or something. And then finally, I guess the last sort of technique will be to sew on some buttons. Um, but pretty straightforward. And I do give instructions in the pattern about how to calculate the button distance if you want to change the length of the cardigan. Um, and also a little handy tip on how to make sure you put your buttons in the right place in the finished piece. So yeah, that's it. It's a pretty straightforward pattern. Um, the only thing that you really need is time because it's knitted on quite a small gauge. So it is um, on three millimeter needles on my sample as anyway. And it is, as far as I can remember, 24 stitches in 10 centimeters or four inches. Um, and with the yarn that I used, which is um, from Hobby, and they kindly gifted it to me, it's a soft alpaca, and it is 165 meters per 50 grams. So it works out as a slightly thicker four ply fingering type um, job, a bit over 300 meters per 100 grams. So obviously it depends a lot which yarn you use, but this alpaca did bloom quite a lot after blocking. Um, and it's created a really nice, light and fluffy cardigan. So it has that nice little bit of, um, kind of that alpaca haze that um, you get on 100% alpaca yarn. But you can, of course, knit it just in a wool. Um, you could probably try a cotton, but I would be careful with swatching just because you don't want to end up with a gappy cardigan. Um, and yeah, so just swatch and block your swatch and see if you like the fabric. Um, I wouldn't say there's any particular restrictions on certain types of fabric for uh, certain types of yarn for this cardigan. The only thing that I would say is that some of my test knitters found that if you knit in a dark colour, the flowers are not very obvious, which is a shame, obviously, because that's the main design feature and take a long time to knit. So I would tend towards lighter colours, but you can also swatch. Um, with the flowers in your swatch to see how they look before you carry on um, in that yarn. So that's just something to bear in mind. But you can see all of my test knitter photos um, on my website, also on Ravelry where they've linked their projects, um, and on Instagram as well. So you can kind of get an idea of what kind of yarn and colours might look nice. There's been some really nice pink ones, which um, are very cute, and some kind of oatmeal colours which are nice. Um, I'm kind of tempted to make another one maybe some point in a white or a neutral colour um, so I can wear it with lots of uh, kind of summery dresses in the summer. So it'll be really nice to just throw it on. I would say in spring, but let's face it, in spring it's probably a bit cold <laughs> here in the UK. So maybe a summer's evening or spring during the day on a warm kind of spring day. So yeah, that's a buttercup cardigan. It is out on the 23rd of February. Um, 2023 so hopefully when you're watching this it's already out and you can head straight to the links which I'll put in the description to go check it out on my website and Ravelry um, and I should also say that there is 15% off the pattern in the release weekend so if you're lucky enough to be watching it before the end of the weekend 
then you can also get 15% off and that's applied automatically um, on Ravelry and on my website. So yeah, super excited for this one. Um, and I'm really excited to finally wear it because um, with all my designs, I try not to actually wear them until I've released them so that I can get all the nice pictures and I don't mess them up. Um, and this one, I've had the sample ready since September or something last year. Um, and I really, really wanted to wear it all the time. But, um, like I said, I haven't because I didn't want to ruin it before the release date. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to start wearing it now the weather is hopefully warming up. So yeah, that's a buttercup cardigan, so go check that out. Next up will be the next design that I'm releasing this year, hopefully. Um, which is this cute summer top. Um, I'm hard to see here. But this is called the Bedruthen top um, and it has a kind of cute v-neck and also a little split hem. And then it also has a little kind of, for lack of a better description, back v-neck which is not as deep as the front v-neck. Um, and I would call this design kind of a bra friendly summer top because a lot of my designs and also other knit kind of summer top designs come with little eye cord straps. Um, which are great and all, but not great for wearing with a bra, especially if you have bra straps that are a bit wider. So this design comes with straps that are a bit thicker. So you can see here. So this means you can wear it really nicely with a bra. Um, so that's perfect. It also, speaking of coverage and v-necks, it comes in two v-neck depths in the pattern. So all the sizes come with two different options for how deep the v-neck will be and that's all going to be in the pattern information. So this is a deep v-neck option but there's also another version with a v-neck that will probably be about here. So it's up to you how much kind of coverage you want. I know a lot of people don't like a really deep v-neck but some people do like a really deep v-neck um, so this just gives you the option to modify that. Um, and as you can probably see it's all knitted in 2x2 two two rib here um, but on the front v-neck we have a little kind of a step detail here so these little steps here are what has given this top its name which is a bedruthen top um, and this is because of the bedruthen steps in Cornwall um, which I went to visit a few years ago now with one of my friends and there's this amazing spa there um, and you look out over the sea and it's gorgeous so yeah I can't wait to go there again and then wear this top. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do that before the release of this top, but um, I will actually be going back there shortly afterwards. So I will make sure to take it with me and get a few pictures there, um, which hopefully will be nice. You never really know how they're gonna turn out. You always think, oh, this picture is gonna be amazing. And then it, it's, it's not quite what you expect, but anyway. So that's a bedroom top. Um, in terms of difficulty, so it is all just knit pearls um, and a few increases, casts on, that kind of thing. So in a sense it's easy, but, um, and it's quite a big but I would say, hmm. um, there's quite a lot of construction here. So you first you make one back piece, then you make the other back piece, you join them, then you finish her back all the way down to the um, drawing for the body and the underarm and then you do the same for the front and um, I'd say especially on the front you have to knit these v-neck steps at the same time as making increases in the underarm um, and this is notoriously hard to write in a pattern um, because you have to do multiple things at the same time and because those are two v-neck steps I'm not able to write it out line by line, um, or at least not easily, and also because the depth of the armholes is sort of adjustable to fit you, and also if your gauge isn't quite um, right, especially in the rows. So that means that you can't really write out the pattern row by row, um, and anyway, that's not normally my style. Um, so, you know, I, I prefer to give more general instructions um, that might be easier to understand um, if you're a slightly more experienced knitter. So I would say this is definitely not a beginner's pattern, even though it's just knits and pearls. 
I'd say in order to tackle this, it would be good if you had made, let's say, a slip over before, or maybe a, um, a similarly constructed top-down um, jumper where you would then knit the sleeves here. Um, just because then you get in a hang of understanding what's actually going on with the um, construction. Um, and a bit like the buttercup cardigan, this is on quite a small gauge. So again, this is three millimeter needles um, and it's all ribbing. So it's not exactly the fastest knitting experience. So if you go wrong, it will take you quite a long time to get back to where you started. So given the small gauge, I would say that it would be good to have some experience of this kind of construction um, in a different garment before that. With that being said, um, there's no reason you can't tackle it. If you haven't done that, you just have to be aware of the fact that um, there's a lot going on in the pattern and you just need to read it very, very, very carefully and make sure you know what's going on. Um, so some of the, this is currently in, being test knitted um, and hopefully that will make it more clear, um, all of these kind of increases and things like that, that are going on. Um, <clears throat> But what some of the test knitters found was helpful was to kind of write down for their size and their kind of row gauge and all this, what to do on each line or to make like a little chart or something like that. So, you know, there are ways to kind of make it more simple than um, it might look at first. But once you've got over this kind of construction hurdle, um, it actually knits up weirdly quickly so I found that when I did uh, my sample you know I whizzed through the kind of up to the join in like two or three days which is quite amazing because it's on three millimeter needles and it's all in ribbing um, and I think this is just because you know you can see it growing and you see the little steps forming so it's quite kind of motivating and each row is quite short when you're doing these sections and um, so it feels like it goes really fast then of course as soon as you join in the round um, you know, it becomes a very simple knit where you don't really need to concentrate. You're just going round and round and round, two by two rib, until you get to the length that you um, want. And then there's a little split hem detail at the bottom here, which is uh, pretty straightforward. So, yeah, concentration up to the um, join. And then it's just a process of knitting it. Um, and that's that. So for this um, sample, I used the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk um, in, ooh, I can't remember the colourway, but I'll link it in the, in the notes. I think probably Rust, something like that. I mean, it's a Rust colour, right? So let's, let's assume it's called Rust. Um, it's probably called Dusty something or other, but um, yeah. Anyway, I love the colour. Um, so the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, um, I don't have a ball of it on me right now. Um, but I did talk about it in a bit more detail in one of my previous episodes, um, so I can link to that as well. It's a, um, it's not a shiny silk, it's a kind of matte finish silk, um, and it's produced without killing the um, silk moss. So um, it has a really nice texture, it does have a very slight sheen, um, it has obviously a gorgeous drape because it's silk. Um, and the colours are really nice. Um, I would not suggest you knit this on in kind of wool yarn or something like that. I would stick to like a plant-based uh, fibre, cotton, linen um, or, or silk, which is not plant-based, but you know, more similar, I guess, to plant those other yarns. Um, just because you want that drape um, and you want to keep the ribbing nice and open in structure. You don't want it to suck back in on your body. Um, to get that nice drapey look. Um, but yeah, more information will come on this um, as and when, you know, the test knit is finished and the release date. But yeah, I'm really excited by it. I really, really like this design. Um, I'm super happy with it. And I just love how these little steps turned out um, because I was agonizing. I mean, I'm probably not exaggerating, probably for about a year, I wanted to do a V-neck top like this with a scalloped edge. And I just could not think of a way to do it that I kind of liked the result. Um, so of course you could pick up the stitches and then maybe do like a crochet edge or do a scalloped edge like that. But 
I just wasn't super happy with any of the results. And this, although it's not scalloped edge, they're little steps, the effect is really nice when you're wearing it um, and it kind of stretches out so then it becomes more like a scalloped edge. Um, so I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out and it's uh, pretty simple really to knit um, other than the construction, but once you get that down, then you're, then you're flying. Um, so this will be out early summer, hopefully May, if um, I can get the test knit completed. Um, and the pattern all sorted out and everything. Um, and it should be out in English and German at least, um, because those are the languages that I will um, write myself, and then we'll see if I can manage to get any translations um, ready for the release date as well. Um, so yeah, that's the bed, roof and top, um, which will be coming this uh, early summer. Um, I'm kind of linked to that, I seem to have a bit of a two by two rib kind of obsession going on at the moment. Um, because my next summer design this year is um, another two by two rib. <laughs> um, but this time, what's quite surprising really is how different these two two by two rib pieces look. So here we have the, the bed Ruthen in the um, silk. And then we have this uh, new design, which sort of doesn't have a name, but I'm calling it the halter-ish top for now. Um, and this is in a wool, like a merino. So um, you can see that this is all loose and flowy and drapey in the silk. And then here in the merino, we have a nice stretchy, tight-fitting um, little bralette thing. So that just shows you how different, you know, effects of different fabrics you get from different uh, yarns. So if you made the bedroom in a merino like this, you'd get kind of a more tight fitting top um, opposed to a nice drapey one. That being said, for this kind of tight fitting bralette, you should not use um, something that's 100% cotton or silk, etc. because it will not fit closely to the body. It will become more drapey. Of course, you can do that if you like, um, see how it looks, it might look nice. <laughs> uh, might be more like a top rather than a bralette. Um, and I mean, you're more than welcome to experiment. Um, but if you want the look um, that is in the design, then for this one, you need to use a um, wool kind of, uh, or at least high content wool blend to get that stretchiness. Okay, so this, uh, you know, doesn't look doesn't look that great when it's not actually on the body um, and this is because it's a bralette it's designed to be stretched out um, and nice and tight fitting um, and if you've seen any of my previous designs I've got a few um, tops like this um, probably notably the eye look bralette from a few years ago um, and it's sort of a similar design um, but rather than kind of two um, triangles on the on the bralette top it has I mean it looks like it has two triangles but when you wear it and stretch it out it becomes kind of more like a uh, I don't know a cut off triangle there is a name for that anyway you know what I'm saying I'll um, post some pictures maybe crop them in so you can see what it actually looks like um, on the body and yeah so that's what at the moment I've been calling the halter ish bralette um, and the reason for that is because it's not actually a halter neck it goes down and the straps attach at the back here i will probably write in a note that you can definitely actually make it a halter neck if you like i just personally can't stand halter necks because i feel like it just wants to like pull your neck down so much um so it's just absolutely not for me if you want that kind of halter look because it will obviously change the way it looks at the front you could um, do kind of a cross strap on the back um, to get that halter look without actually having your neck, you know, <laughs> pushed forwards horribly. Um, so I should mention this is knit in Sunday Sunday, um, which is a great, you know, 100% merino, quite a light fingering full ply. It is 235 meters per 50 grams. So that's nearly 500 meters per 100 grams. Um, and again, this is knit on three millimeter needles. You can see the uh, theme at the moment. 
um, and 2.5 millimeter even on the ribbing at the bottom. Um, but despite that, it knits up really quickly because it's just not that much fabric because of bralette. Um, and yeah, and then there's eye cord straps for now. Um, I'm considering doing some kind of different strap for um, or an option for a different strap because I think not everyone likes the eye cord strap because it's a bit thin. Um, you don't get a lot of support from it. The other thing that I am trying to do with this top, um, which is the first time I've ever tried to do something like this, is to grade it more like a bra than a top. Um, and it's been an experience, let's put it that way, because, <laughs> you know, um, instead of going for your full bust measurement and you just make that size and then it'll be either loose or tight or whatever, depending on kind of the cup size um, of your boobs. So what I've done instead is I have given sizes based upon your under bust measurement and then have different options for loosely speaking cup sizes. It's not every single cup size. It's kind of like small, medium, large. Um, I'm yet to decide if that's how I'm going to do it. But at the moment, there's kind of three cup size options, um, loosely speaking. And I think from my grading so far, it should go from what would be like band size 28, 26 um, in like UK bra sizes up to 44, 46. Um, and then cup sizes A until like M or something. So it's a huge range. And I hope that that will cover everything. Um, but my test knitters are kind of helping me out with this, hopefully a little bit, to see if all of their sizes actually exist in what I've graded or if I've graded way too many sizes that don't even really exist. Um, things like that. So I'm hoping that will make the fit much better um, for, you know, for actually your actual shape. Um, because, you know, boobs are not all the same. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I have to do is try and sort out how this kind of halter bit will be, um, because I want obviously like a good amount of support um, across different um, body types. For me, and I have to say, I have not a lot of bust. Um, it's really nice and supportive, so I can wear it instead of wearing a bra. But of course, that's not necessarily going to be the case for everyone. But my hope is that it will be nice and tight and supporting. And I found that the way that it's constructed here means you've got this kind of eye cord edge. It's quite tight and it really keeps um, everything in place. That might not be the case for everyone. Um, and of course, that's why I'm doing test knitting and trying to grade to different sizes and see how it will all fit together. Um, but I think, although I don't think you'll ever be able to wear it with a bra with proper straps um, without the straps being visible, um, you could probably get away with wearing a strapless bra underneath it. Um, or just wear a bra and have the straps visible. That's what I always do. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm quite excited about this one just because it's a bit of a different challenge for me that I haven't done before um, to try and do it by bra sizes. It might be a complete waste of time because in the end it's stretchy um, and I haven't done that for my previous bralette design and it seemed to be okay for most people that have knit it so far. I haven't had any feedback that the sizes were not... Um, Appropriate. I do think that probably some people, if I think back to the Helix crop top, the ones with their little cables on, that some people I've seen on Ravelry projects, um, and maybe even things I've been tagged in or test knits or something, that people have added some increases um, to kind of accommodate for a larger full bust to under bust ratio. Um, so that's kind of what I want to do for this one, but more officially, um, let's say. And fingers crossed that works out. So, yeah, so far there are 24 sizes for this product. So that'll be fun to write up. Um, but yeah, so that's that. The Halter-ish brawler. And if you have a better name than Halter-ish, please let me know. Um, and I'll link some pictures and things like that so you can see what it actually looks like. Um, and actually, I'm already knitting a second sample of it over here in a light grey um, 
this one is tiny because for my sister and I'm like oh I hope it fits over her shoulders <laughs> but um, I think it's it looks so satisfying just knitting in the round bing, bing, bing. so just showing you three designs which are kind of all on three millimeter needles all quite summery um so you're probably thinking ah oh, you know I don't really fancy summer knits um and that's fine or two by two ribbing for that matter um so I do have another design coming up but this will not be out until late summer um, just because, you know, most people don't want to knit a winter thing in like May. Um, and I'll try and space them out. But this is um, like a cable vest, cable knit vest or slip over. Um, and this is on 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, so I would say it knits up quicker, but then it is all over cables. So... I, it probably still knits up faster, definitely faster than the um, cardigan, probably not faster than a summer top. Um, but yeah, it's um, a v-neck slipover. It's got a bit of short row shaping at the back um, to give a nice shape to the shoulders. It has a big um, deep v-neck, only in one v-neck depth for this pattern. Um, and then you have a folded hem on the on the neck and on the um no, just on the neck the folded hem and then a kind of tubular cast off on the uh, ribbing of the armholes and of the body um so yeah i'm really really pleased with how this turned out um and there's cables on the front and on the back and in the underarm so other than the very largest size or maybe no, maybe the top two sizes. I haven't used any moss stitch because I have a little pet hate of um, cable patterns where in sizes like A, B, C or one, two, three or extra small, extra, extra, extra small, etc. Um, in the smaller sizes, you have the nice cables all over. Then you get to the slightly bigger size, you have the same cables and half of or all the bit under the arm is moss stitch. Then you get to the next bigger size, your cables end up being like just under your neck and then half of the sweater is moss stitch. Um, I can see why you would do this as a designer because it is obviously way easier um, but it just it doesn't seem right to me. I mean it's meant to be an all over cable vest and it's meant to be that in every size not just in size A and B. Um, so I have gone to the effort of designing something to go under the arm and to kind of fill all of the design um, of the body in all the sizes with some kind of cable motif. As I said, I think in the larger size there's a tiny band of like five stitches in moss stitch um, directly under the arm in the underarm cast on stitches. Um, and I think I have that in a few of the other sizes as well, or some broken rib or something. But absolutely not on the bit at the front of the body, only at the very, very underarm. Um, and the kind of, the way I've done this is I've added more cables kind of to this side. So the central cable band is the same in all the different sizes, it's just the bits at the side that are different. Um, and the test knit has already started and people are absolutely flying through this one. I can't believe it. Um, especially considering how many cables there are to knit. Absolutely flying through it. And I think I'm really happy with the decision I've taken to add all of these cables in all the sizes. Because the overall kind of garment looks similar in each size. It doesn't look like a different garment. Um, and by the way, I'm not trying to like pick out any particular designer. I'm pretty sure I've done this in the past as well, where I've just done the cable like in the middle. I think maybe in the picnic sweater, it might be a bit like that. So I haven't added anything extra. Um, and maybe I'll go back and change that one day because it, yeah, I don't know. I'm not happy with it either. Um, so yeah. Um, my other cable design, the sweater, the helix sweater, that has three cables for each size and they are spaced differently for each size. So that doesn't have the thing where the cables will end up in the middle. They're nicely spaced um, for all the sizes. So yeah, that is this cable vest. Currently also doesn't have a name. It's just called the cable vest. 
Um, and I lie there is mustache, but it's inside the, <laughs> the diamonds. Um, so this, I knitted the sample in uh, Rauwerk Merino double knit, um, which is a woolen spun yarn, and it is absolutely, I, it's, it's kind of, it's a completely different to what you'd expect like a commercial merino to be like. It has, you know, bite, it has colour, it has um, a wooliness, it has a strength, and it just holds a cable definition so nicely. It's unbelievable. I mean, that looks like machine knit, right? <laughs> I don't say so myself. It has been blocked. Um, absolutely gorgeous yarn for this kind of project. Um, it is a double knit, but it comes out larger because it's woolen spun. Um, so definitely if you come to knit this project when it's released, make sure you swatch um, just to see that you actually get a good effect in the yarn that you've chosen. Um, yeah, and I highly recommend the Rauwerk yarn if you can get it, especially you can probably get it in most places in Europe. You can get it some places in the UK. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but um, if you can get hold of it, you should definitely give it a go. And because it's a slipover, you don't need too much yarn. Um, so it's a good place to spend a little bit more on something a bit fancy. But yeah, it's got that kind of bite, that like, you know, toughness of a Shetland, but it's nowhere near as like hard and scratchy as that. It's, um, I mean, I wouldn't call it silk soft, but I kind I like that. I mean, I like that it's going to, you know, it feels like this will last for like a hundred years and it'll look identical. So yeah, super happy with this. Um, and I want to knit a second sample in... Um, it may be a yarn that's a bit more commercially available, just so that, um, or like commercially available in different countries, etc. Just so that people can get an idea of what other yarn they can use if they can't source the Rauwerk yarn, or if they don't want to um, spend that much. But that being said, you know, if you can afford it, um, it's worth a shot because it's really nice. So that's the cable vest, it'll be out probably end of August. Okay, so <laughs> I seem to have a bit of a theme going on. I've got two two by two rib um, patterns and I have two cable patterns. Um, and so I got quite addicted to cable knitting after doing the vest. Um, so I decided to design another all over cable pattern. And this is um, in a four ply weight. So it is again the Sunday Sunday actually um, on three millimeter needles. And it is all over cable. Um, and I mean, it does look quite intense, but just like the other cable one, it knits up so quickly because you just get so into doing the cables. Um, there's no particularly hard cables on here. Um, and because it's quite thin yarn, I feel you can knit them all um, without a cable needle. But, um, you know, that takes some practice. Um, but when you've got this many cables in it, you will get the practice. Um, and it also has a little like eye look detail as well to kind of give you a break from the cables. So what's this going to be? It's not slip over. It is going to be a, um, a top. So with negative ease, so this is meant to fit me, so it will have some negative ease. Um, there you go. So it's going to be kind of like a cute little short sleeve summer top. Um, and I'm actually using the leftover yarn from my sundial top. Um, and ironically, it's going to be kind of a similar shape. Um, so that was a circular yoke. This is a set in sleeve, so the shape will be different. But I mean, the overall kind of top like length and sleeve length should be similar. Um, and it's just got a round neck and it'll have cute little um, set in sleeves. And it'll probably be quite cropped because I don't know if I've got enough yarn left, um, but we'll see. So, um, and the keen-eyed among you might have noticed, oh, Iris, you said you don't like moss stitch in the underarm. What is that? Is that moss stitch in the underarm? It is. It is moss stitch in the underarm. But it's going to be moss stitch in the underarm on all the sizes, and I'm going to add extra cables for the larger sizes before the moss stitch starts. So there will be moss stitch in the underarm, but it's not going to get bigger and bigger um, in the bigger sizes and just have like some cables in the middle and then a load of moss stitch. It's definitely not going to be like that. It's going to be, I think the idea basically is that it will be cables 
all the way um, up to the underarm cast on and then the underarm cast on more or less will be moss stitch um, so yeah I'm quite excited by this one though um, I'm really enjoying knitting it up and I was like flying through it and then I put it down <laughs> I shouldn't have done that and started knitting the second sample of my halter top thing um, and then obviously I haven't picked this one up again and it's because I actually have to have the chart open at all the times to um, get all the cable placement right which means it's um, a bit more awkward if you're knitting in the car for example <laughs> so that is where something like 2 by 2 rib round and round and round um, is absolutely perfect and you'll probably all agree with me that you all need like a boring part of the pattern to do in those kinds of instances and then an exciting um, pattern to knit when you actually want to concentrate and get into the knitting. Um, so this definitely re requires quite a lot more concentration than just two by two ribbon around. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of getting more into kind of detailed and um, textured knits at the moment. Um, I think there's already loads and loads of simple knits out there. I love a simple knit, don't get me wrong, but designing it, designing more simple knits, I don't know, it just doesn't get me excited. And I'm probably making life really hard for myself because I'm going to have to grade this, um, which <laughs> will take longer, but that's fine. I sort of enjoy it, do I? I think so. Okay, um, yeah, that's it on the, well, it's not it, but it's the ones, the patterns that are, let's say, closest to completion or are completed. Um, these are the things you'll probably see coming out this year. I hope to start a few other things that will be winter designs. I've made a whole mood board this year. I'm kind of organised, but, you know, I need to get down and actually knit those because I need time for test knitting. Um, so those are the things hopefully you will see this year, plus maybe a few other things. Um, and then there are just a few, just a few little things I wanted to, well, two yarns I wanted to very briefly chat about, and um, designs that I think will be maybe the next ones that I cast on. Well, we'll say that probably in two years I myself and cast them on, but it's not the point. Today, <laughs> I think these are the next things I'm going to cast on. So the first thing is, um... I got this um, wool cotton blend um, and I don't know if if you're familiar with my patterns you might have seen or knitted or heard of the seashell top which is kind of a summer um, camisole type thing uh, with lace all over and that's knitted in a double weight cotton merino blend. And I really quite enjoyed knitting with that and also wearing it because it gives you the best of both worlds. So you have that drape um, and the breathability of the cotton, but you've got a bit of stretch and it's a bit more pleasant to knit because of the wool um, in the blend. So I was in Norwich a few weeks ago for a, um, for a work thing and obviously I had to check out the uh, local yarn shops. Um, and I picked this up, which is a BC Garn. Um, oh, come on. A BC Garn, um, 50% organic wool, 55% uh, organic wool, 45% pure organic cotton blend. And I picked this up from Norfolk Yarn um, in this really nice colour. Um, and it is, according to the label, um, 225 metres per, per 50 grams, per 50 grams which means it is the same meterage as a Sunday Sunday, which we have here. Um, I don't think that will really come up very well on the video, but I mean, it looks like a double knit, if not even thicker than that. So I'm very interested to see how it knits up. Um, well, maybe it's a bit thinner than a double knit, but to me it looks like a double knit. So I'm quite interested to see how it knits up and also, I mean, if it knits up 
kind of like a double knit, but you get 225 meters per 50 grams, you're not going to need a lot of yarn to um, make a garment. So I can't remember how many I got, I think three or four of these. Um, and I want to make, similar to the bed Ruthen top, with the V steps, V neck steps on the, <laughs> with the steps on the V neck, um, I want to make basically like opposite. So I want to do like a high neck kind of top um, with the steps on the underarm. Um, so kind of a complementary pattern to the Bedrusen top. I don't know if I'm going to do it in 2x2 two two rib or if I might do it in stockinette with the steps. Um, I'm going to do some swatches and see how that looks. Um, and if this knits up as quickly as I think it will, that could even be out this year if I like cast it on tonight. And the only reason I haven't cast it on is because I have to wind the yarn. I'm too lazy to get all of my stuff out to wind the yarn. But I should probably just do it. I mean, my office is already a mess because of this podcasting situation. Um, it's funny, really. Like, every podcast, it looks super nice and tidy. And then, you know, in the background, it's just yarn carnage, right? Um, so, yeah, that's the situation. So, it's already a mess. Might as well wind my yarn tonight, right? So, I seem to be, like, on a Sunday's Sunday um, kick at the moment. <laughs> I think basically I bought loads of it last year in like every single colour um, and it goes much further than you think so I have loads left and I'm like oh well I might as well use it up um, I'm not like super fangirling I do like the yarn but and I will use other yarn I just have loads of it um, and I do think their colours are really nice um, so I probably would have showed you maybe this before I'm not sure because I've had it for a long time um, but this is a Sunday Sunday and a Phil Kalana um, Tilia in kind of these lilac colours. And I bought this originally, I think, to make a second version of the Sundial sweater, which is made in this combination. Um, I never really got round to it. Um, and I also am not sure about this colour for a sweater. Um, so instead, I'm going to make a cardigan, um, which is going to have like a little bit of lace detail um, on the bottom bands, or near the bottom bands. Um, and my idea is a bit like the buttercup cardigan. It's going to be the kind of cardigan that you can just throw on and wear in the summer, late spring, um, early spring. I mean, I guess it depends what the weather's like. Basically when it's like between 15 and 20 degrees um, Celsius, and you just want another layer. And hopefully I'm thinking in this kind of cute lilac-y colour. It will go with loads of summer dresses um, and it'll just be a really sweet little cardigan. Of course, uh, from a design point of view, this will not be out until next spring, <laughs> unless I can suddenly magic into existence a cardigan and a test net and a pattern in like two weeks. Um, so even though I'm really keen to cast this on, I know that I should cast on something for this year, for winter. But... That's not how your brain works, is it? So I am tempted. Um, but yeah, keep your eyes peeled for a test knit for this. Probably near the end of this year. And it's going to be a good one. I'm quite excited about this because I've just got into... Well, not just. For the last year I got into dressmaking. So I have so many summer dresses. And I really want to have like a full handmade outfit where I have my cute summer dress um, and then a cute little cardigan on the top. So that's why I really want to make this for me to wear this summer. But uh, it seems a bit selfish because I should make patterns that can be released this year. Hmm, maybe a selfish project is okay. That's it from me today. Um, thanks for hanging out with me all the way to the end of the video. Um, and hopefully see you again in the next podcast, which let's hope will be not in 10 months time um yeah but just before i go because i know someone will ask um i'm wearing the cumulo nimbus sweater um this is one of my designs from last year i think um and it is knit in the camera rose sniffnog sniffnog i don't know how you pronounce it it means snowflake i think um and it is like a really poofy really soft yarn um, highly recommended you can go check it out I'll put the link in there as well um, so yeah 
See you next time.